I want you know talk a little bit then about how we're doing the sampling. So the standard way you would see for people doing these type of metabolite and looking secretions, you put you know a larger number of spheres into a well, and then you subtract, you take out a small volume from that. So for example, removing 10 microliters from the 300 microliter volume. And you can do that multiple sampling without decreasing volume too much. That gives you what we call integrated metabolite response, where if you load this up with glucose at the beginning, then over a certain time period, glucose will decrease, your lactate will increase, and you can measure that. You know, typically measure as an uh, endpoint, but you can also do multiple you know, measurements in between. For our system, because our fluid exchanges a complete volume, so we're doing a one-for-one -one exchange of conditioned media with fresh media, um, you get what we call discrete metabolite response. And so if you're looking at, for example, glucose, glucose, you're taking a smaller amount of glucose out. And so you see a smaller decrease. But if you're looking for a secreted factor such as lactate, now you're actually doing what we call a flop-in experiment is you're looking for an increase above you know, zero background or very minimal background. And so then if you model this as signal to background, Again, for the glucose, which is being depleted in this model, in the integrated discrete, you, you can measure that. And, you know, integrated is going to give you a better measurement of, uh, of the depletion, uh, but you can still do that with discrete measurements. But if you look at the secreted factors, in this case, lactate, which is being produced by the glycolysis, you get a much higher signal of background when you're looking at discrete sampling for secreted factors. And so in that case, you know, I really think our device, which allows you to do that discrete sampling in an automated fashion over multiple time points, uh, really affords a, a very nice tool for, for studying metabolism dynamics. So the workflow that you know, we developed then, um, this is you know, again working with Promega and their low assays, is you would load your tumoroid and uh, media components into the Puma system, at preset times, you can then do a one-for-one -one exchange of fresh media or fresh media compounds with your sample well. And at the end of it, you generate, in this case, five different time points. We have a baseline measurement, uh, which is media only. And then we have four different time point measurements over a 12-hour, which is a 15-hour period here. So each sample is around 20 microliters with the dilution factor. You have plenty to run you know, multiple different analytes and, and do different repeats in 384 well plates. And so it's a very nice uh, correlation. So from one flow chip, which has 32 samples, you can generate you know, up to six or seven time points per sample and giving you over 200 different data points uh, for an assay and really allow you to uh, really map out the metabolism dynamics. So here's some data, and these are from tumoroids, um, and sort of going through the plots here, we're looking at response of individual tumoroids over different time points to different concentrations of these compounds. Um, and the pictures at the bottom show you the endpoint of the viability staining of, of those representative tumoroids. As you can see, at the end, we still have live tumoroids. This is a you know 12-hour treatment, and so the concentrations weren't high enough to kill the steroids, but you can definitely see effects on the metabolism. You know, for example, paclitaxel at the 9 and 12 hour periods, you see a definite increase in lactate production, uh, potentially as it's trying to respond to the, uh, the, the treatment and respond to the drug compound. And you know, trametinib, maybe less response, but at 12 hours, you see a, an increase again of that. So this is something that Matt's group is looking at much more closely, um, very intriguing data, really being able to look at, again, the metabolism dynamics and um, see how does the cells respond to treatment and how does metabolism respond to treatment and can that be used as a target for therapeutic treatment. 